All right, we're back for part two. We part have two. caramel. We have chocolate who's videotaping right now because our, <laughs> our recorder uh, um, had, he, go. He had to take a break. So, give it up for Kelvin. No, we give it up for him. We all day, up. all day. Calvin? I did, Kelvin. Kellen. So sorry. That's what happens in the black community. We you give multiple names. Exactly. <laughs> that boy Kelvin. <laughs> we give it up for uh, Kellen. He's super dope for videotaping part one. Now we and have, contributing. Yeah, yeah. And now we have part two with Butterscotch. He he has some insight to give on Chef the movie Negro D. Joker. And once again, if you did not see part one, this has spoilers. So here we go. Well, first and foremost, like we kind of said, um, Joker always said if you had an origin, it'd be multiple choice. This movie is just another example of multiple choice because at the end of it, um, you have to ask yourself, was it all an inner delusion as yep. well? Mm -hmm. Because he met with his therapist at the closing of the film. Mm -hmm. And as he walked away, there were bloody footprints yep. insinuating in which he murdered her. And upon trying to escape, you see him run sideways and orderly chasing him out. Yep. So with this, you have to ask, was all of this in his head that he recounted to her? Just as something to do? Because she asked him, uh, is something funny? And he said, you wouldn't get the joke. Mm -hmm. So Joker's origin with this movie that's deep, is son. just... Wait, wait, let's pause on that because that's a big thing. Yeah, I didn't even know. Because when that. I was watching some of the review videos, they were talking about that, how they still left a lot to the imagination yeah. for you to kind of figure out what you wanted to figure out. And the writer said, I'll come out with the answer soon, but he's going to let you kind of figure out what you want to figure out as far as what really happened with the girlfriend, what really happened with this therapist. Right. Um, you know, is he trying to escape? Being locked up, right? You know, because I was laughing at that part of it. Thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he goes in there with a new delusion, yeah. like yeah. Yeah, so they did an excellent job. They did an excellent job. <laughs> so it really does come down to trying to piece it together because he's never going to let you in on the joke. So whether this was just one of the many stories he chose to tell, just like Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight, because he always said. You know, every time he was going to explain himself, one, it was his father did it. One was a military accident. There were several explanations he would give upon his crime. So this could just be an offshoot of that delusion. Um, but also, just to kind of dig deeper, it highlights what we go through even in society today where those with mental illness kind of become invisible until they act out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what was going on was people were bullying him because he didn't have it all together, so how could he really defend himself without lashing out? Yep. So you don't want to glorify the Joker in this, but you kind of root for him. He's the underdog in society where it's kind of like, yeah, I'd shoot him in the face too, you know? Pretty much. And the whole Franklin Murray thing where he was saying, you know, this isn't funny, you killed those three men, he was justifying privilege because those three men were assaulting him. Absolutely. Essentially, he did defend himself. So it wasn't so much murder but self-defense so when he's saying is it funny for him it is because it's like wow society really doesn't care enough about the victim mm -hmm. that you will glorify the assaulter mm. oh i just posted a post that said um gosh until the lion learns to write the hunter will always remain glorified i think that's how it goes but just talks about like you mentioned the, the hero yeah the, the hunter will always the, remain he will the always hero look the, like i think you said the hero yeah because the lion had never spoke up or said what went on or you know or had the opportunity the, nobody knew what that perspective was but it's also the victor rights history you know if you conquer you get to put in the history books oh jesus what you want so in essence it's the same thing society aka thomas wayne even you know, because we want to speculate whether or not he's actually Joker's father in this. He could have had, he has enough wealth and power to forge adoption papers, birth records. He could have her committed to Arkham. Because also, if you've ever played any of the games, also, um, the Telltale series actually kind of illustrates a little bit of that. How um, they falsified documents to incarcerate people. So, we, we know that 
the Waynes had that power. And this, it's that Elseworlds story, because I, I believe this is under DC Black Label. So it's not main DCEU. So it's its own, its own universe. So you can kind of play with different elements that might not hold true in uh, mainstream continuity. And that speaks to what Chocolate mentioned about the age difference. Yeah. What she thought the age difference was here in this movie and now that there's a different age uh, difference in this movie. So, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Different you, universe. You see same it. Story. Right. Um, same struggle. But you also... What I got from it watching it was Batman's psychosis as well. Mm. Because Joker used to be motivated by Batman, but Batman's not motivated by the Joker's actions. But look. That switch. Yeah. I like this, and because and, this was something else from the videos I would watch afterwards, because mm -hmm. I'm just a dweeb, and I'm going to go back and do more research when right. I really like a movie. But they mention that how there's a love-hate kind of a relationship. Mm -hmm. You think that Joker hates Batman, but he really doesn't. They need each other. Right. And I thought it was like, yeah, it's a codependent kind of a relationship. But I thought it was really cool how it was played in um, the Batman Lego movie. movie. You that need was me. my favorite. Like, you need yeah. me. How come you don't? You won't. Right. Respect? Like, he, Joker was like begging Batman to it, right. to make him his worst. His and, one and only. Like, you're my one, one and only. only. Like, <laughs> like and, and Batman was really playing him like they was in a relationship. Like, no, I'm seeing other people. Like, I'm, like, like, I'm <laughs> seeing other people. You. Yeah, like, I don't need you. Right. But they realize they really do need right. each other. So, yeah. But 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 with this movie though, really to dig into to the mental aspect though. I mean, you really get to see, like, if you've never seen The Killing Joke, which uh, is where Barbara Gordon is paralyzed by the Joker, and it insinuates he rapes her in this, in this comic book, too, because he takes nude pictures of her after he shoots her through the spine and she cripples her. Hmm. Like, and then he shows yes, those pictures. That was in a comic book? That doesn't novel. seem very funny. Oh. Same, same thing. <laughs> comic book, it's thicker. <laughs> but he shows these pictures to Commissioner Gordon of what he did to his daughter. And Joker's philosophy was all it takes is one bad day. And that's a tagline from this movie as well. All mm -hmm. it takes is one that's bad day. That's why he day. said I had a bad day. That's so, why he told her that. Uh, and I didn't know that either until till later right. on. I, I, watching my, doing my research and they said that. And I was all like, it takes is that's one bad why day. he said that. Uh, because, you know, you're always one bad day away from saying fuck it. Man, facts. So in this, Joker was just like so many. Fuck it. So I'm just gonna give a bunch of bad days, right? To everybody, to everybody, <laughs> right? Because I had a boatload. Right. <laughs> so you know what? Days. I'm gonna give y'all just a little taste of what I've endured this long. Yeah. So you know, and even with the laugh, um, oh, you have to you have to touch on whether or not it was, was a real good. thing if he created that card or not with his own delusions, saying he had a disorder. But the jokes on the audience where he's really doing it because he wants to fuck with you. So that card didn't have to be a true medical card. Um, so you really just start to see how he, he, he descends into madness. And if you've even seen Taxi Driver, they've even said it's heavily influenced by that mm -hmm. whole performance. Mm -hmm. Because you see how he is coming out of his shell. Like, I heard a lot of people say when he went into the fridge, it was like a, a, a cocoon state. And then when he came out, he was fully immersed Ooh, in the Joker. Yeah, I didn't song. think about I it like that. that. That's good. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can look at this movie. But you've got to take it kind of as a standalone uh, joke on the audience, essentially. Because, like Joker always said, multiple choice. So this is just one thing that he wanted to say to poke at people. Because I, I, everybody was worried, would this be the definitive joker origin you can't really do that because he's not that character that you can kind of pin down with that but you see subtleties in all media right so from the animated series batman animated series to the comic books graphic novels to this you kind of see each little part of him play out not the full crazy mastermind but he took credit for it at the end when all the other jokers came out and he reveled in that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, was that a delusion? Did that really happen? Or was he in the back of the squad car, escorted off the soundstage? So, mm. a lot of things after the Murray murder could have been fabricated in his mind. Just say, you know what? I was the hero of this moment. And I wanted to, you know, poke yeah. at everybody. So, you know, you, you have that, that ability. But 
overall, the movie was great. It'll make you uncomfortable. Completely. I mean, you're not going to be able to sit be still. Yeah. Yeah, it will make you uncomfortable for sure. Because the imagery, the soundtrack, because the violin that they're using in there, like there's just a it's lot of so things that sadistic. You know, we know sonically sounds and do certain things. So they found those notes that are gonna just make you unnerved. And they did a great job with it because it's not to where you're nauseous, but you're you're upset because you're trying to figure out how to feel. Mm -hmm. Um, but each step of the way, you see the system failed them. Yep. yep. Oh, absolutely. So many the different ways. And society. Thank so, you, Odom. What do you do? And he was reaching out for help. Right. He tried. He really was trying. Like, that's the crazy part about it. Because you, oftentimes, you don't get to see that part. Right. He's just already ready for war, ready to murder people. And it even shows, like, how on the one part that. Um, they were when he was on the bus and he was just playing with the little boy. Uh, he, he was just being my son alone. He was being completely innocent and the passenger because we've been taught as people to dismiss someone that is different mm -hmm. so quickly that she was like, You're messing with my son and I'm like, No, your son was being disrespectful, <laughs> staring at him, but him being a nice person just started to you interact. Know, interact with the little boy and play like peekaboo face and do right. these silly things with him. It was just like, man, I hate that that has happened, but it also causes you to check yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, how often have I done this? How often mm -hmm. have, I, have I dismissed someone because they're different from me? Yeah. For right. whatever reason. Yeah. Um. So that, that to me was like, it, it just really, I love movies that cause you to take a look at yourself. Um, and it causes you to question how you feel or how you're being treated. And it causes you to really take this objective view as much as you can of society without you even knowing it. Yeah. You're you're watching this movie and you don't even realize that your brain is being like, What have I done something? So. Yep. So we're gonna take a quick pause because Chef Butterscotch over here, pull that out just a little bit so we can see it on camera, sir. So he's making Mexican tonight. What is that thing called again? Mexican crescent pie. Mexican crescent pie. Yes, we have the cro hey. crock pot going here. Crock pot is done. This is, a, this is a pressure cooker. This is done. We're going to take that out and we're going to um, actually hit that in the wok in a minute to kind of just get a little toast to it. You know what I mean? Um, but next, I'm going to do the traditional ground meat for tacos. Then I got to make uh, corn masa from scratch, homemade taco shells, the whole nine. It's processed. This so. is also doubling as his Food Network, Z Living, and um, what's the other food channel? All of them. If All those the network uh, audition videos because this is this is what we do. What are we going to call this? We'll call this uh, Butterscotch and McKee's Pork. <laughs> yeah. Dinner and a movie, technically, if you wanted to break it's it down. Dinner and a movie, dinner and a movie review. <laughs> nice. There you go. nice. That's a thing. Next yeah, week, I mean, coffee ring. Don't come. Don't. Uh, don't come for us. Don't come for right. us. Don't come for <laughs> us. Dinner and a movie review. Right. So we have here Kellen. Kellen has not seen it yet, and we do apologize to you because we are telling you all of this, and I do recommend that you leave if you don't want to hear the rest. <laughs> right. Kellen was our, our camera guy for part one of this video. And contribute. Yes. We um, have Chocolate here. She's representing four. I represent it for um, individuals who love a good movie, um, but you have not been into like the superhero action people type situation. That's not something you really grew up watching, but you still enjoy a good movie. And I'm representing for the people who are fans. I did not watch the comic, read the comic books. Like I said, I don't know why, because I was a reader as a kid. Um, but I didn't read the comic books. I loved watching the cartoons and the movies as a kid. And I love it so much as an adult, I go by myself to see it. So, And, and I represent the lollipop kill. Butterscotch. Yeah. Chef Butterscotch. <laughs> um, I am the consummate black nerd. Um, just love reading and all that. And was able to immerse in characters. And, yeah, I'll do it for them. Do it for those outcasts. Do it for the vines. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so, did you have more to say? Because if you don't, I have a question. Go for questions. Okay, so each person, who do you think was better? Heath Ledger or... Heath Ledger. 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 Heath 
for Joaquin Phoenix? Um, I, you know, it's hard for me to say who was better because I feel like they were in different worlds, if that makes sense. They were the same person, but just in different worlds. And it's hard because part of my opinion is kind of crafted by watching another movie review. Um, shout out to Tony Baker. If you ever if you don't know him, he's a comedian. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. And his movie reviews are awesome. Um, but because I don't, you know, know a, enough. Um, but I've seen The Dark Knight and stuff like that. I agree with him when I hear him say like, it's hard to compare because this is a movie all about Joker. And then Joker is just a character mm -hmm. in these other Batman movies. Yep. So I think independently, Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix, like, they both just did a great job. And they both did well taking you in to their mindset and, and, and into that world. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have a favorite one. But I am going to say that I'm so happy what you said about Joaquin. Like, he just went in there and had a good time. <laughs> like, because... He, as we know, to his detriment, it took him different places. Yeah, um, that was speculation. Oh. Well, that is speculation because we don't know. He's gone. We don't know. He's gone. He's gone. His so sister said he, she talked to him the night before he did it. The night he did it. So it was speculation. Hollywood had a way of, of flipping that. But the people having the a way of flipping stuff. But you know, when you work in the right, when you work in the on, field, you know that that kind of stuff can have an effect. It can affect you. It can right. definitely have uh, an effect. Right. Um, and it could be a detrimental effect. Right. Um, Do you want to answer it next or you want to hold off? I'm going to answer. Okay. Um, typically, I wouldn't even want this question to be presented. But it's for the sake of the review. Because I feel like, let people just be great. Facts. Why can't we just let people be great? He was good over here. He was good over here. These are two totally separate situations. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, Chocolate mentioned... Just like Tony Baker mentioned, um, we're comparing a full-out movie origin story to a guy playing a villain. He's not even... He's the main villain, but he, he's not the only villain. Yeah. You know what I'm For saying? That? So you can't compare all of this to this. And they both were phenomenal to me. Right. So, typically, I wouldn't even ask this question personally, but for the sake of the review, I felt like it was good it's to a hear good question. person's perspective. So, that's how I um, feel about it. That was a good question. I think, if I'm going to answer it, honestly, I'm going to I'm gonna hit you with a little mind bender with it. Honestly, I feel like if you're going to compare the two, you make them one. Make the inner monologue of Heath Ledger's Joker... Joaquin Phoenix mm. because as he explained himself mm -hmm. multiple times it was multiple choice mm -hmm. so just cue up Joaquin's performance as the next thing that he would have said the next time he went to a costume yeah he could have so, turned into well he was that at some point in time right but mentally it's a mental thing because again if it was a delusion or he's just poking fun at people it wasn't a real origin anyway and, 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 and the performance in it if you take it from just a, a perspective of mental, it felt very dreamlike. So he was playing, if you think about it, he was playing Heath Ledger's memories or thought process. So it was supposed to be a little unhinged, a little wonky and different because it, it, it was an extension of what was done here. So you really kind of don't compare it, but you kind of mold them into each other. Mm -hmm. Because for those two characters, they were the closest ones to kind of fit together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can they try to put in um, Jared Leto's Joker, which was horrible. Which one is that? From the Suicide TV Squad. show? Suicide oh, Squad. Suicide Squad. Horrible. Uh, I hated that. I feel like that movie all together was of him not to that good. have any kind of thought about him as a Joker person. He was bratty. Joker was never that awkward. He just came off as awkward. He didn't come off believable. He came off 
don't even but know. But he just kind of breathed in on Suicide Squad. But no, they, he, he said he immersed in it. He sung people rats. Will Smith uh, talks about it. He did all these weird Joker-esque things, and it was terrible. Uh, so his method acting like didn't really... work. His method was on methadone. But... <laughs> So he was like, it was really a method sending don't. out like yeah. pranks and yeah. stuff to That's people to prepare dumb. for the role. Yeah. yeah, he really did that. So it's like mm. you got to just uh, right. So even one part like, of it is talent is really right, the main it thing. He was just like, you suck. Please never call us again. Really? <laughs> like I said, I don't really have any feelings on him. I loved, and I already said this before, but I really, 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 really loved the. Uh, Lego Batman Joker. Zach Galifianakis. All the begging and the pleading and just please you say it. it's like please love me but please hate me again. Like like you That's so to hate weird. Me. I love like, it. Like that perspective I, I had never thought about Joker like that. Yeah. Until that moment. So that was just hilarious to me to but see them kinda like in a toxic relationship yeah. with each other and not really realizing how codependent they were. And so for me he that he's one of my favorite jokers. And Jack Nicholson killed it too, cause he he for me, I don't know, it's just nostalgic for me. Sure, sure. Cause me and my uncle used to watch it together. Right. It that's just it's just nostalgic. But, but you know what though, Caesar Romero from the '66 Batman with Adam West. Oh. He was different too. He played it. He played it up. But he, it worked for the campiness of what that was. What that was. It that was, was playful. Super campy. Right. Yeah. Wasn't but, Jim Carrey? Riddler. 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 But the, the quintessential best Joker rendition, hands down, Mark Hamill. Absolutely. Luke Skywalker. That is the... Who is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't. Absolutely. But those for, the, for the initiated, um, Mark <laughs> Hamill, Batman the Animated Series, was the best Joker, hands down. Cadence, just, just the way he carried any episode he was in. As Joker, that was Joker for my childhood. And Do see, you that feel... Joker I don't remember. Okay. Not, in a, not that I didn't watch it. Because I wasn't sitting and watching it all the time. But when I saw it, I, I was enjoyed it. So that's... I don't remember that Joker specifically. Power was... Batman. Right. I, I was watching. Was that a real life? But him didn't, he no, didn't it was set cartoon. Out it was animated. It was... Yeah, cartoon. So do you feel like... Um, be- people who are playing Joker right now are imitating that cartoon? Oh, definitely. They try their hardest to do it, but they can't live up to it because you 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 hear Mark Hamill's voice and you know it's Mark Hamill. You know who Mark Hamill is, correct? Mm-hmm. I don't. Luke Skywalker, Mm-mm. Star mm-hmm. Wars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Mark Hamill. Yeah. But we need to go back and watch. Cause no, I don't remember him. I would have to go back and watch a cartoon episode and be like, okay, because I remember watching it, but I was so focused on Batman because Batman's my favorite superhero. Right. I but was. I know, did y'all see that meme where they said uh, Batman's superpower is white privilege? Yes. <laughs> I yes. thought that was hilarious. Because facts. <laughs> facts. <laughs> like. So I because... would be so focused on him and Robin and, and yeah, that I did and Batgirl. But I didn't care about her. Right. I was oh, watching please. Wishbone. Okay. Uh, Wishbone. I was watching that too. Listen. Right. So I didn't pay no attention Batman. to that Joker at all. But but no, Mark Hamill's Joker is is the best Joker just because to be able to just anytime he's on, he captured that that moment, like the way he acted, everything, and even Harley Quinn's introduction in Mad Love. She was introduced in the cartoon before she was even in the comic books. Her oh, first appearance now that's was Mad Love, written by um, Bruce Timm. So. I mean, you know, a lot of these characters, their characterization was, was created by the individuals who voiced them first. So they gave life to it via a voice before anybody acted in that, that realm afterwards. So, But then, isn't that kind of unfair? Because he has a whole TV series, seasons upon seasons, to prove to you what kind of a joker he is. When we're comparing him to just one movie. So that that is the first Joker voice or voice, but the well, first actor was Caesar Romero in sixty six Batman. Okay. He used to have the uh the his suit was over. like a was it burgundy? 
so oh red. God. He was kind of goofy. He was kind of oh. like that. He was kind of just like that tyrant that. that get on your nerves. Right. Like just obnoxious type. Okay. Yeah, more than anything. I've like, seen that kind of... Obnoxious criminal. Yeah, right. that kind of like look for the Joker. Mm -hmm. So that's him. Okay. Well, when was the first... When was Joker first introduced into the Batman series? 66 uh, Batman 66. So the original um, Adam West version of Batman. So in the comic book. Comic books. Um, he was yeah actually, in the comic book. He yeah. was actually Batman. It was what, issue ten and he died. Oh, he died. Yeah. Because and I saw that when died. I was doing the when I was doing my research after the fact that right. he was going to be just a character that came on and died. Yeah, he was a one off. Wow, yeah. I wonder what made him take a life of his own that he just came back like Honestly, and, and stayed. Everybody loved him, right? No, 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 not even the the writers. It was just kind of like uh, okay, he died, but we want to use it again, okay, for effect, and they like brought him back. Yeah, and then they started to flesh it out more. And he just kind of became this thing. This whole to own Batman entity. And the way that they were able to craft just Joker kind of being at the center of a lot of what was going on with Batman. So the and comics... initially, Batman was, would kill people yeah, off. Yeah, Batman killed. But with time, they he made it to where... Yeah. Batman hung somebody. And with time, they made it to where like, <laughs> Batman was not a killer. So... That way, they, yeah, you be needing them. To, sometimes we just be needing them to just off some of these people. <laughs> I mean, like, stop wrapping them up and taking them to jail, please. Yeah, like, please. Can you just don't make a criminal party? burrito. Yeah. Just kill don't them. Don't kill Joker because we need him. But the rest of them, let them go. Let them go. <laughs> off these hoes. So, yeah. Um, okay. I had another question. Um, and let me, okay. may I ask, like, where did... Um, Batman is in what universe? DC. DC universe. Yeah. Okay. And so his story has always been like a vigilante type story. Like has he always He's a victim. Okay. Depends on who you ask. He's a victim of privilege too though. Because yeah. all Batman ever says is, My parents are dead. They shot my parents. I want to go fight crime. Shut the hell up, you whiny, privileged little Don't brat. come for Batman like that. <laughs> First of all, don't come for Batman like yeah. that. <laughs> he can marry, he can marry I he love got billions of dollars Batman. Don't, crime don't come for, for him like that. You you put some respect on his name. Okay? Just, all parents, three of y'all. Yeah. All three of y'all put some respect on Batman name. And then in the comic book, it's Joe Chill who killed uh, Batman's parents. And then in the uh, Tim Burton Batman, it was supposed to be a young Jack Napier who became the Joker. So you see how multiple choice plays in here? If you're going to roll all these roles into it, his name was never the same, you know? So, I mean... Jack Napier. Yes. Arthur, Arthur Fleck. Fleck. Um, what was his name in the comic book? Yeah. Yeah. Paul. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Paul. They, they didn't really focus on his backstory. Nobody talked about it. They do talk about it, but it's always something different. Okay. They, uh, the Killing Joke touches on his his origins. He was a stand up comic, like in the movie, um, but the mob had killed his wife. Um, he was the Red Hood. So I mean, there's multiple things because again, Joker's origin was he was a part of Red Hood gang. They ran into Batman. Batman threw his ass in Ace Chemicals. Bob's your uncle. You got Green Hair Joker. So. I mean, oh, so see, I always wondered if there was chemicals involved. Well, I feel like there's always chemicals usually involved. Usually it is. Like, in this comic book, right. cartoon, the movies one. prior, the TV show, it was always some kind of chemical. So that's why it was so cool to see what if trauma and mental health was yeah. played a role in right. this. You know, that, for me, like I said... And, that mean, just, just that working in the trauma field. Listen, for me that was like yes. That was that's really like a huge. It just gives it a whole new spin. And like I said before, in the first review that we did, just treat people nice. Please treat people nice. Just treat people nice because they will get joked. <laughs> and they deserve to get shot in the face. Oh, and turn. Be careful who you bully because you can create a character. Uh huh. Listen, you don't want to see no, 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 no
character and then they coming for your tent. Yeah. Right? But the sad part is, is technically, does the world deserve a Joker right now? Do we deserve someone that maniacal and sadistic to wake up everybody right now? I thought Truthful. he was in office. But what are you waking He's them up to? He's not doing enough. You got to be absurd. And when I say he wake is up, so absurd without being absurd. violent. Right. <laughs> he's so I mean, absurd. More absurd. <laughs> but but I right. <laughs> but Chris, you gonna make me check every notebook you got in your house? Right. <laughs> What you what you planning? I know, okay. like, look, you, know, you sit in the corner shaking. Like, yeah. Right. Well, I'm my wife, like, my wife, she won't go to counseling because she'll get 302. Like, you can't, you can't have. Uh, look, see, is it some things that go on in people's minds. You gotta think, though, is it fun? Because we work human service, so we yes, see these we things do. act out. Yes, we is do. Is it fun to just be unhinged, like, with no care? Like, what do you want? Yeah, it's fun. Do you want to I'm going to go in here, I'm going to lick some windows, I'm going to punch some orderlies in the throat. Yes. What you going to do? I'm already here. Uh, yeah, Man. like, they, it, they, listen. Okay, which brings me back to what I said before in the other video that although there was mental health that was a part of this, mm -hmm. I you could still see that some of it was this decisions. Right. There were still choices. Of course. Which brings that, that level of like... Could his choices have been controlled if he could have had access to his medication, which he didn't have access to because they cut government funding, so he couldn't even get his, his stuff. That right there. I just want to know. No, 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 not victim blaming, but it's more so like we still have choices whether I'm going to do this thing or I'm not going. But to But you know this what? Thing. This brings about the question of, and this is remember we got into that debate of whether. Every choice, and I'm saying every choice, mm -hmm. is a conscious Decision. choice. I don't believe every single choice is a conscious choice. No, we have a lot of... Choice. I do believe most choices are. But, but I don't believe see, all choices are. But I'm, I'm a slight anarchist in, 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 by nature. I don't know why, but it's something about these systems of control and conformity. I don't want to fit your expectations of what I should be. And what he said was also, oh, I, just, I just had it. He, he made that statement. Um, what was the statement? It was about mental health and not being seen or whatever. But, uh, You're talking about the in the movie, the joke? Yeah, in the movie. Oh. Uh, what did he say? It was... Um, when he was talking to his therapist, like, you haven't listened to anything I've said. Right. And just being invisible. Yeah. A lot. It, it, it plays on that too. It's that invisibility. It's, it's. I agree with his methods a little bit. In this, I'm rooting for the villain. He's I, Killmonger. Listen. No. He's no, Killmonger no, he in a uh -oh. in a. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. No. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. Motivations. Yeah. We're completely different. I'm just mm -hmm. messing with you. I just said yeah. that to say, you right. know, but with this, you agree with the with yeah. the way who the enemy should be. I agree be. with letting it burn, <laughs> just like in the Dark Knight. Some people just want to watch the world burn. You do, and sometimes the world deserves to burn. Mm -hmm. We can't keep saying that you can do this and there's no consequence. Yeah. Right. So, in essence, you deserve to burn. But everybody wants to believe, but why? Can't we do this? You led everything up to this. You did nothing to help. But that's, that's why that's I like, said every what's his villain name? is a hero. Because in what's... your mind, that burn right there is you becoming a hero. You fixing things. You changing no, things. No, that's not you're... even trying to be a hero. That's saying... No, it's a hero of mentality. <laughs> like, I'm going to I'm gonna make a change. There's something no. horrible, terrible this going on. And second. I'm going to change things. Wait. Well, that, what about what's his name that had the the hand, no, the glove, and he made everybody disappear? What's that movie Thanos. called? Thanos. Yep, and him. Game. No, it's Infinity not. If there, it's, not the it's not the same. That's why what, what I'm saying. That statement does not. It's not the same. It doesn't apply to Joker because he's not trying to be the hero. No, what I'm saying is, Robin Williams, mm -hmm. before he died, he said, part of him playing some of the roles he's played, every villain is a hero within his own play. So in Joker's mind, gotta, he is doing this to there's some justification somewhere for why he's doing no. this. I am doing this because the world is jacked up. No. We deserve to burn. That's not you it. know, Wait. because it's so jacked up. That's Killmonger. No. Um what did he say? Uh 
Well, Killmonger was more so about Liberation. you have, yeah, right. your your yeah. people Evolution. are suffering. They're always yeah. fighting some Evolution. kind of cause. Now, whether we agree with the cause is a whole other thing. Sure. But within their head, I am fighting some kind of cause, and my actions have purpose, and they are justifiable. Wait. They could be sick and twisted. But, Joker, <laughs> but here's the thing. you got to understand the psychology of Joker in the comic books. He doesn't have a hero mentality with it. He, he says it. He's an agent of chaos. He just does to do. There is no rationale <laughs> behind it. You know what he amazes me? No. 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 But even Joker is mayhem. Him. In yes, those in John, those auto commercials, he's mayhem. <laughs> have a reason why, because he also has saved people in the past. Joker's not a hero, but if he so chose to do it, that's all it is. What it did he save someone? But there's still always it's in there. something. But there's, there's also there's I also still a story believe called, but, there's always something even behind that. But that's he the gets problem. a thrill out of that for some. Reason. But see, but that's the problem. This is cool. Well, to him he, for but, some. But he did listen, say in that listen, movie listen, that listen. he let the the shorter guy go because right. you always treated me yeah. nice. Just go. Yeah. But, but not even just that though. You you want to put it in rational thought because you're rational. You have to this 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 uh, dispend belief for a second and just say if this is what it is. I don't has, ever believe that it is what it is. But you have to let. All the safeguards that make us sane go and not worry about sanity. You got to give it a I do it just because. I might have to take a shit and I might just want to shoot him in the face before I do it. It doesn't mean that I'm motivated to do it because I got to drop a deuce. It's just, you know what? I'm in this mode real quick. My stomach's upset. Let me get some yeah, off the tummy. Still Boom. Even something I'm going to do what I do. That. Not if you're just doing it. Well, but what if you're still, just doing it? There is still something even behind that. Whether on the you. surface you know. Yes, for me. Right. Whether you know what it is or whether you don't. This is cool and this is fun for a reason. But that's if that's your motivation. He doesn't have that motivation. He got a motivation he doesn't. to cause mayhem. No. No, because he's... he's he, Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Returns. Oh, I, Joker. Okay, Karen, I talked. I took your perspective right then that you were saying, like, there's a mental health aspect to it, even if he doesn't know it. But you're you're saying that there's a a motive. You're not saying mental health. You're saying there's a motive behind what he's doing. There's some reason why this is cool. But that's where we might not are agree where this is, why this is. We might not see it. We might not ever hear why. There is some reason that makes this okay to you. No. Because just like there's some reason why it's not okay to the next person. But he also said comedy is subjective, which means if he thinks it's funny, it's funny to him, but it's not a motive. But what you're doing is telling him who he is and why he's doing it. You're trying to give him a motive. Where if he was in front of you and he said, no, I don't have one, you're going to keep saying, but you have to. Because for you to be comfortable with what he's doing, you need the motive. You're afraid of that boogeyman behind the door who no, just does. No, it's not I'm, a, be, I'm well, afraid well, of them. I don't believe that anymore. But that's anymore. the problem. I don't believe people just do but, with no rhyme or reason but they behind do. it. But they do. I don't believe that. You believe what you believe. I believe, believe what okay. I believe. But now, whether we know why we're doing, I don't believe we always know. I believe there's a whole lot of other uh, but factors but involved. You don't always know why right, but think you about tend to open the door with your right hand instead of your left. Whatever you but, tend to do, you might not know why you've done it. But think you've been about doing it this it for way. Years. With the end of the movie, even. Uh huh. Put your mentality in that, that social worker's shoes. She kept telling him, You're doing it for this reason, you're doing it for this reason. And she died. But here's what I'm saying. But, 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 I, I'm listen, not saying no, no, that you but, should but, but, approach wait, the crazy person no. and say, you're doing it for this reason. You're doing but, it for this reason. In my head, I'm like. But if he's sitting, <laughs> but here's the problem. If he's sitting Something across from on. you and he's telling you there's not. But there's wisdom in that too. And, and you're not. You're not about to go up to Joker and tell him he's wrong because he did. You're <laughs> but, but, but but also he's. You gonna keep your thoughts to yourself. Listen, you know, I'm gonna move out of Gotham. Yeah. I know that. Conversation. The white people ain't move out of Gotham. Listen. Oh, man, out of Fuck this place. Man, this place is crazy. Like Two Face, Joker, Riddler, Penguin, Bane. I'm leaving. I'm Why are we here? here? Why do all these people live in one I'm city? Right. What is it's happening the in the this city? It's, it's so dangerous. Never. <laughs> I got another yes. question. As I guess I'm the 
facilitator here? Yeah, facilitator what? All right. Do you believe, and it's for all three of us, okay. do you believe that there should be a part two? Yes. So he yes. wants to start. Butterscotch okay. wants to start. Go ahead. I feel like part two, you get that lead up. You get that 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 beginning where in Batman Begins, you see the, the commissioner pull the card out, Ouch. right? Um, you get to see what leads up to that with the Joker and that line of dialogue. There's a new villain in town. His name's the Joker. Now, obviously, Batman isn't of age for that moment, but it, it kind of leads itself into seeing how he either further becomes Joker or if he is the inspiration for the actual Joker. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna take, that. if you're gonna take even some of that ideology in the comic books, there's one coming out under DC Black Label that is like the three Jokers, because they're saying in, in this other continuity, three people have been the Joker at one time. So you have the, the mastermind, the, the masochist, and just the serial killer. So there's different levels to how he functions and operates. Um, but I feel like a sequel to it, I want to see them, if done right, explore his continued descent into madness, but see him become crafty in what he's doing and relish in the chaos. Just to be there to watch and see. It's like. It's I know, like, like when Joaquin Phoenix was like dancing and looking right. just like. <laughs> okay, it product placement. Of, like, <laughs> um, uh, Billy, was it Billy Joel? Ziggy, Ziggy saw this, whatever. Which one was that? He died, but it was white dude. I can't remember which one he was. But he would always do that. I forget his name. Which one was it? He was androgynous. He sometimes dressed like a female ish. Oh. Yeah, oh, um, name, Marilyn like, Manson. Yeah. Older. Oh, you're talking about. Oh my gosh, they had their family had a show. What is their name? No, no, no. Oh, not him. Ziggy okay. Stardust. Whatever, whatever. I can only remember that. That's one of the stage names. I just can't remember. No, not Gene Simmons. But <laughs> anyway, just just that 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 way of how he'll evolve and really start to take on that persona of chaos. Because he just does the do. He has no rhyme or reason. And people want to psychoanalyze. That's why Harley Quinn fell in love with him. Because she couldn't pinpoint what this one was trying to do. Because he showed her, that's not what she I She fell do. in love with him because he manipulated her. He, oh, did she? she? He drew her all the way. Well, she she that that, sounds, that sounds like all she men. Could. She could. She no. could. <laughs> I personally, to answer the question, do not feel like there should be a second one. I liked it so much that I feel like it should just be left alone. And also, this movie had a theme of mental health, mm -hmm. trauma, um, Let me get that bullying, bullying, chaos. Mm -hmm. um, it had a it had a certain focus mm -hmm. with him, and I don't believe they can keep that same focus of trauma, mental health, the backstory, what this now he can has lead power. to what this can lead to and why this might not be where you want to go or maybe it might be where you want to go. Sure. You know, it had those elements that led up, okay, this stuff keep building up and mm -hmm. if you keep feeding your trauma, it's gonna possibly look like this. And so I don't feel number two would give that same vibe of what I loved so much but that's in not the why first one. So for me, that that brings me to my conclusion, <laughs> my conclusion, that number two, <laughs> I'd rather it not be there, but I'm going to watch it if it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Chocolate, what's your thoughts? You know what? Part I, two or no? So, I mean, I wouldn't mind it having a part two, but I do see where the parts that we did enjoy, I think they will be gone now, but it would be, I, you know what? I would be nice to have a part two. To see now, if it is his delusion, the city that is now taking their power to say, you're going to do something about what's wrong with us. And this is, but to see what that looks like um, in the city and, and how has, will the town change now that um, get, uh, Thomas Wayne is dead and his wife is dead, like, well, we well, know what, what else would that? Well, what else would happen with that? Well, we like, know what happened. Well, that's true too. That's true too. So they're dead and everything else that Batman deals with. That's true. So it's Gotham like, is fucked up. I think that um, I wouldn't mind it, but just like this one, I had no plans initially to see Joker 
because I don't like dark movies. I don't like movies. Like, I... But I do like movies that have a message. So, initially, my mindset for this movie was it is going to be dark, sadistic. I don't want to watch it. But I am happy that Sherelle, well, excuse me, Caramel did suggest it because it had what I like about movies and it had deeper meaning and it made me think. It did make me a little heavy. I did have a bit of a headache towards the end because it was just so much. Um, but I wouldn't, and I wouldn't mind them doing the second one. Any times I have an issue with the second one is that, oh, will the acting be as strong? Yeah. yeah. And that always makes me scared because it doesn't discredit the first one, but it just makes you go, maybe you should let that go. And when movies are so good like that, very rarely do you have, a, um, what is it called when movies... Sequel. Sequel. A sequel or, or a series of movies that just... Are as strong. Are as strong. Lightning in a bottle type thing. Mm. There is very, very limited times where any of us could say, oh man, that second movie, listen, it was quality. There's not many times that we're yeah, going to be is able rare. to say that. It's very rare. So that would be my fear. I would say though, if they did a second one, I would like them... I would like to see the origin story because I just love origin stories. Yeah, um, yeah. Of a new a new character. Well, mm. I like Riddler. Or... So if you're gonna continue oh. Joker, let's see how Riddler came about or how Two Face came about so, in you know, I mean, that I'm world. Yeah, because I've seen him come about in other shows, which we forgot to mention Gotham. Gotham is terrible. I love Gotham. How none of the characters were accurate. They never use the Joker character is not well. accurate in this movie either. Yes, it depending is. on who you ask. No, it is. That's it's a whole different name. It's a whole different backstory. Ain't no chemicals. You know what I'm saying? Because like it's it depends. Choice for, What's for Joker, accurate is 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 subjective. No, not for Joker. Joker already made that statement of what he does and how he does it. Any other character, he is said it's multiple choice for him. <laughs> but other characters have one viewpoint. They've only been created one way. They don't have that psychosis that Joker does. So it, it doesn't necessarily work. But if you do a continuation, you can kind of correlate to say that Joker helped to create the other villains. You could lend that perspective. That would be a good second movie, though. And now you start to dig deeper into that side. That would be, a good, that would be a good Arkham already. sequel. So now he's talking to people. He's... he's, he's Motivating other people to maybe break out or... But then we can still see their backstories. Right. And, and in, from in, that same lens. montage, right. Of trauma and um, mental health. It's called Arkham Stories. And you got different patients telling their stories in group or just in a room. And I like that. It reminds me of Orange is the New Black. I don't watch that. Oh, I love Orange is the New Black. But you she see made them, me watch you one see episode. them in jail... <laughs> But then, so we each, Donald Trump is black. This kind of this orange, new black. Is that the thing? We're done with so you. So we see them <laughs> in jail. But each episode has. Um, so you see their their struggle with daily life on that particular day, whatever, in jail. But then, it, each episode focuses on one character from the show mm -hmm. and how they made it to jail and the things that they struggle with, the way their life looked. Um, the things they enjoyed, maybe relationships they were in, whatever brought that slowly brought them to this place. So they're having certain relationships, struggles within the place, but then you're also seeing what brought them. Why do they feel this way? Why is their personality this way? So I think that would be cool if they did that, you know, right. with the characters we already kind of know and love for Batman. Right. So... Um, final thoughts for chocolate. <laughs> um, I enjoyed this conversation heavily because I have learned so much. Um, and I will say that mental health is nothing to play with. Um, and also something my mom always used to say to me, she was like, you would come home sometimes crying as a little girl and you would be like, why won't they just be nice? And I... <laughs> And I feel that same way. Why do we just have a level of nice that we treat certain people? Like, I just I just don't understand that. I don't care how much money you have, how much money you don't have. At a base level, you are a human and you deserve respect. That, that, and that is, for me, point blank period. So, 
um, that's that's my final thought. It was a great movie. Final thought for chocolate. Give it up for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> my final thought is um, go see the movie. However, protect your peace, protect your space. If you are not in, a, if your heart is heavy, maybe heavy. maybe skip this movie. Seriously. Listen. If you don't like super dark things, maybe skip this movie. But it like it had a deeper meaning. Um, it showed what trauma looked like. It showed what mental health looked like. Even the, the I don't want to say the good and the bad, but how different people um, approach the perspective of mental illness and mental health. Um, I loved it. So, that's how I feel about it. Go check it out. And, um... Chef it's gonna scotch. make you think. It's gonna make you think. You're gonna go. You gonna feel like maybe this happened this way. Maybe it didn't happen that way. Whatever. But yeah, check your trauma. Go see somebody. And if they're not working out for you, please go see somebody else. And if they're not, keep it pushing. If they're not working, uh -huh. if the meds ain't working, go back to the doctor. Get get a reup. Do whatever you have to do. And if that ain't working, keep keep trying. Don't let your trauma consume you. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, don't go there doing weird stuff. Um, no, I, I think at the end of the day, the movie was really great. I feel like the time that it came out, it, it was needed in a sense to kind of really put the mirror towards society and where we're going. Um, but also, you think, in real world, they shut down numerous places that people did seek health in. Mm -hmm. And even the way that we deal with, with, with mental health, you're not allowed to talk about it. That's that's what he said. You had to pretend to be happy. It's what he wrote down. Mm. You know, it's that you can't show people you're hurt. Um, Facts. That's a huge thing. Let's pause on that. Because you could say something like, I could say something like, oh yeah, I wouldn't look right in that dress. And somebody's like, oh, don't say that. Don't be, why you got to down yourself? No, I just would not look right in that. People have a hard time when it's not butterflies and roses. Or rainbows. And rainbows and whatever. Like, just well, because it's, I mean, just because it's real don't mean that it's negative. Well, that's the thing. I mean, honestly, to, just, I agree. to be honest, I mean, I, I struggle with depression and whatnot. I think any artist does. Anybody who feels an urgency or a need to, to do more than the average person who just wants to skate by, we all feel that because you get that way to the world sometimes where you want to create or you want to affect something so much and you just see constant roadblocks and doors.